Do you want to start doing stand-up comedy? In this video, you're going to learn how to do stand-up comedy by going to a comedy open mic show and telling your jokes to a supportive audience. How's it going? My name is Marcus Seppela. I'm a stand-up comedian and communication trainer helping you bring more fun to the stage. On this channel, I share a lot of public speaking tips about how you can better engage with your audience, whether that's on video or in the comedy club like we're talking about today. So the topic for today's video is your first stand-up comedy open mic. And here are the three blocks that we're going to cover. We're going to start by talking about what is actually a, a comedy open mic show. After that, we're going to look at how do you get started writing jokes for your comedy act, your comedy set or routine as we call it. And then finally, we're going to look at uh, what can you actually expect as you go to the comedy club to do your open mic um, performance and what are the, some of the do's and don'ts that you should keep in mind. Uh, also stick around to the end of the video where we are going to cover some things that you could do off stage to make you a better comedian. So that's the bonus bit coming up at the end of the uh, end of the video. This video today is actually brought to you by my Stand Up Comedy for Beginners class. And you can go and find that class if you want on um, uh, at this web address. Uh, comedyforbeginners.com. Let's put that on the screen as well. There we go. Uh, comedyforbeginners.com is where you can find my class about how to do comedy for beginners. But let's jump straight into this training about what you need to know if you want to do a comedy open mic show. So what is, what is what actually is a comedy open mic show? Well, an open mic is where anybody who wants to perform stand-up comedy can go and do so in front of a live audience. Now, one important part of this is, of course, that it's an opportunity for new comedians or aspiring comedians to try comedy for the very first time. So there's always going to be a couple of newbies at these open mic shows. But that's not the only people who are going to be there. Because an open mic is also a very important tool for established comedians to try new material. If you're doing comedy, you don't want to be doing a new material at paid shows, but rather you want to try them out at an open mic first to see if they're good. And of course, like any of joke writing, most of it is going to be garbage. So you better weed out which is going to be the garbage and which are the good ones that you're going to keep in your act. The third function of an open mic is that you may only have jokes that you have told on stage that work, but you want to fine tune them, you want to improve them, you want to maybe take some of those ad libs that you did at the show and make them into a more um, intentional part of your act. So an open mic is a great tool for accomplishing all of these three things. And if we compare to uh, conference presentations, business presentations, it's a shame that we don't have open mics for business presentations because often if you do a conference presentation, for example, that may be the only time that you're actually doing it. Wouldn't it be better to do it 10 times at an open mic first before you actually go and do it on the big stage? And this is what we have as an asset as comedians, these open mics. So when, what are the types of shows that you can expect at an open mic show? Well, there's one big difference between the way open mics work in the US and the way they work in Europe. If you go to an American open mic show, typically the audience is going to be only other comedians. Typically at an American open mic show, there's nobody who is there just as a civilian to watch the show. Another thing that I've only seen in the US is that you sometimes have to pay to perform at the comedy open mic. This could be $3, $5, $7, maybe you have to donate something, maybe you have to put cash in a bucket at the show, or you may even have to buy a ticket online before you go to the show to pay to perform. This practice of paying to perform, I've never seen that in Europe. Actually, usually at the European open mic shows that I've been to, you actually get something in return. You get a free drink or, or something like that. There's some comedy shows where you even get multiple drinks for free. So you don't typically pay to perform in Europe. And, uh, and also in smaller American markets, you, also, you, <clears throat> you usually don't have to pay either. But I would say the biggest difference is probably that European comedy open mics typically do have a real audience. For example, the shows that I organize, uh, I often get an audience of 80 to 100 people just for an open mic show, uh, which is a big difference between the way we do it in Europe and the, the way we do it in the US. Another thing that can vary when it comes to what you, what you can expect when you go to, to an open mic is the venue. 
Some of the venues are going to be professional comedy clubs where everything is set up perfectly. They have the lights and the amplification, the microphone, everything is going to be beautiful. But sometimes the show is going to be just in a bar, in a restaurant, in a coffee shop, in a laundromat even. So the venue where you're going to be performing um, varies, varies a lot. If you're able to do it at a comedy club, then great. But even if the venue is something where there's typically, um, where there's typically other things than comedy shows, that could be actually great as well because you can set up a really nice comedy show in almost any venue. You just need one spotlight, you need amplification, and you need microphone. And you can even do it without the spotlight and without a microphone. So it's really easy to set up. And regardless of which menu you're going to find yourself in, you have to be able to, to adjust to the different circumstances because you never know what you're going to get. But that's also the fun part of, um, of doing comedy. And especially in these times, sometimes the show is also outdoors, which is an added, um, added benefit and a, real, and a really interesting experience. Um, I can tell you from organizing these outdoor shows. So we talked a little bit about the, uh, about the different venues um, and what to, what to expect. Um, regardless of which kind of venue it is, it's always a good idea if everybody who's in the room is there to see comedy. So if your comedy show is in a separate room from the bar, that's usually a good idea because then there's no bar noise spilling over to the room. But if you want to do this, you have to get used to different kind of venues as well. If you want to perform at a comedy open mic, of course, you need some jokes. So let me tell you some, uh, let me share some ideas that are going to help you write your first jokes. One of the most important things as a comedian is the ability to make fun of yourself. And making fun of yourself is great because when you're able to make fun of yourself, you also kind of have a license to make fun of other people and other groups. So make fun of yourself first, make fun of your own group first, and then you have kind of a license to make fun of other things also. And this is a great place to start mining for joke ideas. And here's one suggestion that I have for you, one structure. Think of that time you were an idiot. Think of that time you were an idiot where you did something wrong, you made a mistake, you got into an embarrassing situation, um, uh, or, or something went wrong, something went as it was not supposed to happen. And this is a great starting point for anybody who wants to start writing jokes. Think of that time you were an idiot. And the reason is the following. Nobody wants to hear a story where everything goes great. There's no drama in that, and there's certainly no humor in it. There's humor when something unexpected happens. So when something goes wrongly, something, somebody fails, or most of the time you fail, that's already good material for jokes. So think of that time you were an idiot that used that as a starting point for your material. And just as a little bit of a inspiration, I'm going to share three short uh, examples of when I was an idiot, because making fun of ourselves, that's what we're here to do. So the first example is that my boss joined the same gym as me, and I don't want to see him naked at the gym. It's bad enough when he does it in my office. So that was a bit of a joke that I wrote uh, on that topic, but that wasn't the end of it. Because not only did I write a joke about my boss, I also made the mistake of telling my boss that I had written a joke about him. That was me being an idiot. Here's another example of me being an idiot. Uh, I went to the grocery store and I got this 12 pack of local craft beers and five boxes of cheap tissues. I certainly felt like an idiot when I, when I get, got to the checkout counter and the cashier was kind of silently judging me based on what I was buying. It was 12 pack of beer and five boxes of cheap tissues. Definitely an idiot. Example number three. I went, uh, this was a couple of years ago, I was in Toronto, Canada, and I went to a nude beach by accident. I did not know that that was going to be a nude beach. Uh, I did not have the required equipment to participate in that activity. I didn't have a towel. Yeah. <laughs> so plenty of, plenty of dumb stories about uh, times when you failed, times when you made a mistake. These are good things for you to start writing your jokes. As you go to see other comedy shows, which by the way is something that I definitely recommend. If you want to become a comedian, definitely go out there and see live comedy. So as you go out there, you're going to see other patterns and other structures that people use as well. Some of them are making fun of themselves, maybe they're making fun of other groups. You're going to find these different joke structures. But 
as a, as a single recommendation, just think of the time you were an idiot, write some jokes about that. Once you've been able to write your set of jokes, you're not quite ready yet to, to go and tell them on stage because you also need to be you also need to rehearse them. If you are gonna arrive at a comedy open mic and you've gone through your set 10 or 15 times, you're gonna be in a better better position than many of the other performers there. Maybe some of the other ones are kind of looking at their notes, reading them from there, but if you actually rehearsed your set, you're gonna do really well. So rehearse your set in various different um, uh, situations as well so that you'll be able to tell your jokes correctly. Hey, hit the like button if you've been getting some value from this video already. Now let's look at how should you behave as you actually uh, come to the comedy open mic show. But in order, but first, before you get, before you're able to get on stage, you have to sign up for the show. There's different ways of signing up for a comedy open mic show. Let's start again with the American example. A typical American comedy show will have a sign up sheet on the date of the show. And you, often it's a, uh, the show is advertised as follows, show at 8, sign up at 7.30. Which means that you have to be there at 7.30 and put your name on a list, a physical list usually, there's a piece of paper. There's two ways that that list can be treated. There's usually, a, a, there's usually numbers on the list, so there's numbers from 1 to 20 for example. And one way to handle it is that if you put your name on number 5, then you will be the fifth perform performer. But some shows also take all those names, put them in the, in the bucket, and then there's a lottery system to determine how you're actually going to be performing, or rather in which order. So just make sure that you understand the system um, when you sign up. In those cases where you have to pay to perform, sometimes you actually have to go online and kind of buy a ticket, a performer ticket. And uh, when that happens, uh, usually you don't have your pick for, uh, regarding which order you're going to be speaking in. But there's many other ways of signing up for a show as well. For example, this is what we often see in Europe, is that you go on a Facebook event and you put your name, uh, you write your request in a post at, on the event. For example, you might just have to write a spot, please, to get a, to get a spot to perform. That's one way. There's many other ways. Some shows have a Google form that you have to fill in and some other places you just have to email somebody. Um, and there's many other ways that you can sign up for a comedy open mic show as well. Once you've signed uh, up though, you're ready to join the show and there's one thing that you should keep in mind as you go up there and perform. Just be in and out of the show on the stage uh, as quickly as possible. And what that means in practice is that don't do a long introduction. Aim to get to your first joke as quickly as possible. If you do want to say something at the top of your set, just say, hey, good evening everybody, my name is Marcus Seppala, and then you move over to your first joke. So no long introductions. One reason for this is that nobody also cares who you are at this stage, right? You're, you're just trying comedy for the first time. Your job is to make them laugh and they don't really care who you are. If you're a more established comedian, still nobody cares about your background. People care about uh, the fact that you should make them laugh. Another thing that I recommend you avoid is to start with a question. And it is tempting when you're up there to say something like, hey, good evening, how is everybody doing tonight? But I recommend that you don't open with a question for two different reasons. One reason is that uh, when you open with a question, it almost sounds like you're asking for permission. And that's not a good place to start. You're supposed to be there in a confident mood, in a powerful mood, and by asking, you're almost asking for, permi for permission. Never ask for permission. Which, by the way, is good public speaking advice for other occasions as well, not just a comedy club. The second reason why you should not ask how everybody's doing is that it's not clear to the audience how they should answer. It's not even clear if they should answer the question. So when you ask something like this, how are you guys doing today? Some people may applaud, some people may just say woo, some people may give you a long-winded answer, some people may not answer at all. So avoid asking questions uh, when you're just starting out. One last piece of advice as you go to your first open mic is maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit obvious, but it is to be nice to everybody. 
Comedians have sometimes a, um, a reputation of uh, not always being the nicest people and you can make a really good first impression by being nice to everybody. That means being nice to the other comedians, it means being nice to the organizers, and it also means being nice to the people who work at the venue, including the staff. If you're nice to everybody, people will remember you for being a nice person and that is already an important aspect of uh, becoming a stand-up comedian. Yeah, I'm actually going to share with you one more tip about how you can make yourself more popular off stage in just a moment. Uh, but first, let me, let me tell you about this course. Let me tell you about my stand-up comedy for beginners course. Um, today we're talking about uh, the, today we've been talking about the uh, kind of some of the basic assumptions and some of the basic steps for you to get started with comedy. But if you want a step-by-step -step playbook on everything that you have to do, Check out my course. You can find it at comedyforbeginners.com. Comedyforbeginners.com. It's uh, my stand up comedy for beginners course. And there's actually a special offer that you can find on that site right now if you sign up at uh, comedyforbeginners.com. You're going to get yourself a beautiful paint by numbers system, including lectures and activities that's going to get you ready for the stage. But here's that bonus tip that I mentioned. Being a great comedian is not always, it's not only about making the people laugh. It is, to a large extent, about making people laugh. But there are so many things that you can do off the stage to make yourself more popular. And one of the best things you can do is to bring your friends to the show. Bringing your friends to the show is a great solution for, it's a great idea because it solves kind of two things at the same time. One is that if you have your friends in the audience laughing at you, you're going to have a nice supportive atmosphere, which is really important so that you get the high energy in the room. The second reason is that if the producer sees that you are able to bring lots of friends to the show, that's going to make you a more popular comedian just by the fact that you're able to bring people. You don't have to be the funniest person, but if you consistently bring five or ten friends to every show, that's going to make you much more bookable just by, the fact, by that fact alone that you're able to bring people. So never underestimate the value of bringing friends to a show. By the way, if you want more communication tips like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I post new content on this channel every Thursday. Just click the big red subscribe button if you're interested. On, when we talk about stand-up comedy and public speaking tips, you can actually learn a lot of cool public speaking tips on the stand-up comedy stage. And I've actually learned so many things on the, on the comedy stage that I put them together into a workshop series it's called Leadership Lessons from the Comedy Club. And if you want to check out the full Leadership Lessons from the Comedy playlist, click or tap the screen right now, or tap the bottom of the screen right now for another video from my channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.